All right. So, hello and welcome to our Saturday morning brew and chat. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm Patricia Botero Saint Jean, and uh, my expertise is to be a starter business coach. I'm also the founder of Open for Business, which is a small business research lab and a coaching agency. My specialty is to coach people who want to transition from being employees to becoming a business owner, to starting a business. And I coach them through my online courses and membership site, as well as a one-on-one -on -one coaching. But the reason I host this event, uh, the Saturday morning brew and chat event, is to invite other experts, because obviously, I only, uh, only one piece of the puzzle, which is start a small business, but there's many, many other expertise that are needed for people to be successful in their careers, in their lives, and also in their business. So today in the house, we have Patrice Perio, Perio right? So am I saying right? Perio. It's Italian, so it's Perillo, but out here, out, yeah. out in the West, everybody calls me Perillo, so yeah, I'm getting I'm, used to that. I'm half, I'm half Italian, so I'll, I'll I know. Perillo. <laughs> But Patrice is a career transition, career transition expert. Patrice has decades of experience. She's not just a new career transition expert. She has been doing this for years and years and decades and has worked with clients from all over the world and provided a lot of workshops and presentation to help mm -hmm. people find their career, the ideal career. And uh, she created the Passion Purpose Paycheck Coaching Program you are in the, currently in the San Francisco Bay Area. So, you know, choosing the right path in your life. We spend so much time working, whether it's in a business or in a career, it's so important. And yet people just sometimes just fall into jobs, right? They fall into careers. They don't give a lot of thought. Sometimes it's just accidental. Sometimes it's, uh, it's the, um, their uh, families or friends who influence them or school system and, and, and then they end up not happy with what they have chosen. So Perry, Patrice is here today to help us identify the best way to pivot or to find a job in a career that we love. So I'm going to give you the floor. Patrice, welcome. And um, the, uh, the screen is yours. Great. One yes. thing I forgot to mention, um, we're going to have Q&A at the end. So any of your personal questions or about your career or about the material that Patrice is going to present, please uh, add it in the chat. I'll be uh, reading the questions and then we also will open on mute everybody if you want to share your questions live as well at the end of the presentation. All right. So I am ready to go and I hope you can see the first screen. Uh, welcome to Five Steps to Pivot to a Career You Love. I'm so excited to be here. And I just want to let you know you're in the right place if you're feeling stuck in a career that you maybe you trained for, you spent a lot of money on your education. I've worked with doctors and lawyers and um, every field, people who have really invested, and yet they get into a career that is, doesn't feel like the right fit anymore. And often um, they've worked through their 20s and now they're in their 30s and they can't imagine 30 more years of this. So you're in the right place if you're feeling uh, stuck and you know this isn't the right career for you. Or you know, maybe you are thinking about changing directions but you don't know exactly um, what direction to go in. Uh, some people have too many ideas. I've worked with clients that have so many passions that they are um, really overwhelmed and they're trying to choose uh, between so many different things. Uh, the other reason that sometimes people really have um, difficulty is that they don't have any ideas. They're drawing a blank. I've, I've done workshops where people have raised their hands and said, I'm, you know, what's, what's available? What are my options? I'm just blank, I need to know. So if any of that sounds familiar, um, you're in the right place. And most importantly, you're in the right place if you don't know where to start. Oh, there we go. So as I said, this is, you're in the right place today if any of these things are true for you. And we are going to, um, I, I wanna put in context, you know, Patricia did a great um, uh, introduction, but I wanna put in context what I'm about to share with you because it really relates to 
the years and years and years I've spent studying um, human beings. And I, my background is, um, you know, a deep dive into human behavior, uh, the study of human behavior um, and human change and transformation. And my greatest passion really is helping people access their full potential. So literally I have searched the world for techniques, for strategies, for ways to help people get unstuck and start moving in the right direction. And I've taken all of that 37 years of experience and now I have sort of directed that to working with people who want to change careers. So I'm working a lot with the mind and I'm going to invite you to keep a very open mind as we go through this today because what I have to share with you is not what you're going to hear from your average career counselor or uh, vocational counselor, you know. This is, this is really taking a deeper dive so that you can really get clear about not only what you want to do, but who you are, how you want to live so that you can make the right choice. And so it's an unconventional approach. It is non-traditional. Um, it may seem sort of way out of the box, but bring your curiosity, bring your beginner's mind and um, stay open. And I think you're gonna take away something really great for yourself today. So that's a little bit about my background. Um, so what, I'm, what you're gonna to learn today, let's see if we can get, you're going to learn, uh, I'm gonna take you the, through the five steps. We're gonna kind of take a 30,000 um, foot, as they say, view. So we're gonna go up in the clouds and kind of look at the big chunks, these, these five big steps um, you need to go through if you wanna arrive at the right answer for yourself. Uh, there are many different ways to figure out a career path, but if you, if you really wanna find the one that is a fit for who you are, what's gonna make you happy and fit your life, these are the five steps and they need to be taken in a very particular sequence, which I'll be sharing with you. I'm also going to tell you the mistakes to avoid because it sort of breaks my heart when I hear people come to me and they've already been um, spending hours and hours, um, weeks, months even, um, searching LinkedIn, trying to figure out how to redo their resume, um, and saying, what's out there for me? What's out there for me? And you'll find that there's some questions that you need to be asking, and there's some other questions that you need to avoid asking, uh, particularly in the beginning steps. And I'm also going to share with you my little bonus. Um, I have done so much research on what makes people successful. Um, I do consider myself a peak performance coach as well as a career uh, career transition expert, but I'm going to share with you what makes top athletes and top performers uh, successful, and I think you might be surprised about what that is, so stay tuned. So, um, so on this slide, I hope you can see it, it is about, um, it's, it's a slide I found, it's a, something I found that really shows um, you know, sometimes people say, well, maybe I should just stay where I am, you know, um, you know, why should I make a change? And maybe it's not the right time. And I love this idea of, you know, when you're frustrated and you feel like you have more to give, uh, that, that can be a really hard place to be in, uh, to show up at, at a job and just to feel that you're only using maybe a small amount of your potential. So frustration, boredom is another key. If you're feeling bored, if you feel like uh, you can do this in your sleep, or it just, you know, it doesn't appeal to you anymore. Um, or if you're just feeling, you know, you, you get up in the morning and you go to the job and it doesn't feel like you're on a path. There's no direction forward. There's no goal that, you know, 
you're focused on. So when frustration, boredom, and lack of direction come together, it's time to do something better. So this is, um, I'm going to share with you, if you take nothing more from this presentation, I want to share one thing with you. And that is that I've taken many people through this process and I've watched many people successfully change careers in the middle of the stream. And I'm going to share some case studies. And so one of the biggest obstacles is thinking, well, I can't do that. That's not possible. So if you take only one thing away today, what I really invite you to take away is just this simple idea. And what is it? It is my core message is I can have a career I love. Now, just entertaining that thought, you don't have to do anything about it, but just this is possibility mindset. If other people can have a career they love, I can have a career I love. So one of the things that I know is that sometimes people just say, you know, work is supposed to be you know, miserable. I call it job jail. <laughs> people sentence themselves to 30 years in a job. You know, when I was doing psychotherapy, people would come in depressed, anxious, and come to find out, you know, they were in a career, a job, and they were looking down the road and they had 10, 20, even 30 more years. And they thought they had to stay with something that made them miserable. And they would come in and say, gee, I'm depressed or I'm anxious or I, I'm just you know, feeling awful in my life. Things aren't working for me. And we would find out, well, it's your career. You're not happy doing what you're doing. And they would say, well, you know, is anybody? <laughs> and I wanna say, yes, there are plenty of people out there who love what they're doing. So take that message to heart and Let's get going here. So I want to, often when I'm talking with people, um, we, we first look at what's, where are you now? What is sort of in the way for you? And in terms of making any changes, typically what comes up is people don't make a change because they're looking backward. They're looking at as I said, you know, I've helped doctors and lawyers. They're looking at, I, I spent all this money, all this time. I've gotten all this education. Everybody, you know, thinks I have a very prestigious position. Um, you know, what would people think if I decided to quote unquote, throw all that away? They say it's too late, you know, um, and quite honestly, there's a lot of fear of the unknown. You know, that, you know, there's a saying, the devil you know is better than the, uh, the devil you don't know. Um, so that will keep you stuck worrying that, geez, if I make a change, it might be the wrong thing. So that fear of that, we all experience that, that is normal. But to the extent that you let it stop you, and you tell yourself, well, you know, it's better that I just stay here because what if I make a change and it doesn't work out? So these are the obstacles. And I will say the common word that comes up over and over and over that when I hear and I ask people what's stopping them, a lack of confidence. And confidence is simply a belief that you can you know, do or achieve something. So again, we go back to my core message, you can have a career you love. So let's imagine now, we would fast forward to six months to a year down the line. And think about, you know, if you had gone through these obstacles, gotten over them, overcome these challenges, where might you be? So here are some of the things people tell me. In six months from now, if things could be different, they would want to be clear. They would want to have a, a clarity about their future. They might not know or be in that new career, but they can see a path forward. And there's, you know, they're excited about it. They're excited about their future. There's a feeling of 
taking control. I'm doing something. I am moving in a particular direction. And along with that comes a feeling of energy. And it does increase your self-esteem to feel like, I know where I'm headed. I am headed down that path. And that path is going to lead me to land in my ideal career, my ideal job, my place where I just feel like I'm in flow. And we'll talk more about flow in a minute. But imagine if in six months to a year from now, you could have that clarity and you could be excited about your future. So let's talk about the steps. How do you do that? You start down that path. So step one. So as I mentioned, uh, my background is uh, really in what goes on in human beings, what motivates them, what allows them to make changes, what keeps them stuck, and what gets them unstuck, and what helps them be successful. So one of the things that we know is that the thinking that got you here, all of the thoughts that you have, and we have about, I think, I really forget the statistic, but something like 60,000 thoughts a day, and 80% of them are reruns. So that kind of thinking, is, you know, whatever got you here is not going to get you into your future. So there's got to be a mindset shift. So your mind is showing you reruns, and the problem is that you're not looking at a possible exciting, wonderful, imaginative, not yet here future. Children actually do this very automatically and children grow and their, their brain is developing and there's so much going on because they are dreaming of sort of this amazing and maybe totally unrealistic, of course, future, like they could fly or they could be a superhero. But the number one step that you need to do, and I'm going to warn you, you're going to think this is kind of, you know, out there. But the number one, the very first thing you need to do is to shift gears into, um, I just have a quote here from Albert Einstein, we cannot solve problems with the same thinking that created them. So the very first step that I take everybody through is creating a compelling future vision. So I don't know if you can see that, but I hope you can. Um, let's see, back, all right. So your com a compelling future vision, what is that? This is not, we're not talking about using your logical mind here. Remember my expertise is about the mind. How do you use your mind your mind is generating, you know, all of it's dictating to you, you know, the steps to take in your life. And if your mind is not focused on something that you're excited about moving toward, you're basically focusing on what you don't want. So a compelling future vision is a larger than life vision. It's something that I know that I do this process with myself, you know, every now and again to get myself jazzed. And what I imagine is something that is, you know, would be considered unrealistic. So sometimes I'll say to people, well, just if you could have anything at all in your life, you know, they, and sometimes they'll say, I want a private plane or a, a, a private chef, or I want to live on an island. These kinds of thoughts, you want to put that out there because as crazy as it sounds, this energizes you. It changes your, your chemistry. So to begin to dream about some amazing future, not specifically about the job, but the life that you're going to lead. So how do we do this? So step one is... You stop asking, you know, uh, you know, what's going to happen to me if I change and how am I going to pay my school loans and what will people think of me? And you stop thinking of those questions and you and you you stop thinking of, geez, what are 
what's, you know, I have to go to LinkedIn, I have to do my resume. Those are not the right questions to ask. At step one, you want to pause and ask yourself, if I could have anything that I wanted, what, what would be that vision of my future? What do I really want? And again, go big. You've got to go big. It has to be sort of this just very exciting um, vision of, your, of yourself and your future. And as one of my coaches used to say, if you're not licking your lips, it's not good enough. So you might want to make it mouthwatering. So um, let's move on to step two. So step two, remember, I'm all about how do you get your mind set up so that, you know, you begin your body, your mind, your body, and your spirit are all lined up to take you forward. So you have something called an invisible blueprint. I call it your invisible blueprint. And this is something that is not talked about, but it is very much what is driving. It's, it's the driver of every decision, every step that you'll ever take is, is really driven by this part of you. And it's your value system. Now values are largely unconscious. What values are, are a collection uh, that they really are energy. They energize us. Um, they make us either move away from what we don't want. So someone might be afraid of, um, well, a lot of people are afraid of losing money. So they will say, I've got to work really hard. So that's a value called, it's a move away value. I don't want to be poor. Um, so values can be either something you move away from or something you move toward. I want, you know, a life with lots of creativity. I want to have self-expression. I want to wake up in the morning and uh, have a sense of choice and freedom and whatever. So your invisible blueprint really is your value system. And to be honest with you, this is not something that people pause and take a look at. And it's best done with a professional because what you do in this situation is when I work with someone, I'm taking them deep inside. I just have a quote here that confusion, you know, if you, if you have confusion, if you feel pulled in one direction or the other and you're indecisive, it's because Again, working with the mind, you have a logical mind. Your conscious mind is your logical mind. Oh, this is what I should do. This is what I should pay attention to. I should have a stable job. I should, you know, do, uh, I should stay at this job for the rest of my life. Whatever the, the conscious mind, the logical mind, hey, I'm making a good salary. Why change? The conscious mind is only aware of certain values. But your unconscious mind that's been tracking every experience of your life knows so much more about you. And when they are in conflict, your logical mind and your, for lack of a better word, your feeling mind, your intuitive mind, when those are in conflict, that's when you become confused and indecisive. So... Uh, in this step, what really has to happen is that you have to uncover that blueprint. And, you know, just one little thing that you could do right away if you want to, is you can ask yourself, if I could get up in the morning and I had a career I loved, what, what would, what are the ingredients I'd want to have in it? Now, again, these are not things like, you know, a, a particular amount of money or a place that you want to work or particular people. These are abstracts. So for instance, a lot of my clients will say, well, I want flexibility or I want a career that allows me to use my expertise. I want a career that fulfills me. So one thing that you can do right away is to start to access that information. And um, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but 
what I do once we access that information, these unconscious values, we take a look at them and we see if they are values that are based on sort of outdated thinking, um, limited thinking, um, or are they values that are, you know, just moving toward what you want and their possibility values. If they are values that, and values are not good or bad, but if there is a belief, well, I, you know, let's say somebody says, well, I, I really want a lot of stability. We might look under look, we might look under that value, look underneath and see what is driving that. And maybe it's a decision that they made. Maybe there's a lot of turbulence in their early life. And so they clung, they, they, I have a client like this, she became an engineer and she, she's a scientist and she has a good stable job, but she chose that path specifically because there was a lot of upheaval in her life. So we had to do some values cleanup. So that's sort of something very advanced, but this step is uncovering your invisible blueprint. So step three is, something I call saboteur management, and I have a toolbox on the screen. And saboteur management is, um, I, you know, some people call, call it the, you know, the, the annoying roommate in your mind or um, your gremlin or, you know, those, those self-defeating thoughts. But the reason I put this in as a step is if you do not anticipate this saboteur, this, you know, the, the, the thoughts that say, what are you crazy? You really think you could, you know, change careers when you've already, you know, gone down this other path, you know, what, you know, what are you doing? So the saboteur only shows up your own saboteur. And sometimes the saboteur comments come from other people. I know when I was changing careers early on, my father said to me, well, you're not going to make any money at that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thanks a lot, dad. But if I had internalized that and I had said to myself, well, geez, you know, maybe I shouldn't leave this prestigious job and, you know, go back to graduate school. I would have taken on the saboteur inside of myself. So saboteur shows up only, it only shows up when you are getting ready to make a big growth step. So you've got to learn to manage that. And there are infinite amounts of techniques. Um, there's, an old, uh, there's an old comic strip that is called Pogo. Um, and I remember this because this, this is a poster that is around and it, Pogo is this character and uh, he says, we have met the enemy and he is us. And so that's what the saboteur is. It's a part of you. It's a natural part of you. Uh, I could get into the whole thing about our brains and, and how we develop this, but we have a, we have a cerebral cortex, which is our higher level of thinking. And then we have um, our more primitive um, part of our brain, the brain stem, the amygdala. And the amygdala is sort of the center of fear. And honestly, we need that to, you know, sometimes, you know, protect ourselves, but we don't need it to be working 24 seven. And often when we're making a change, the saboteur starts to really try to stop you. So in this step, one of the things that you can do is just to anticipate that it's going to come up and don't fight with it, <laughs> okay? Just say, oh, there it is. And in my work, we, you know, again, this is one of the steps that we take a deep dive into. We surface the saboteur, we take a look at it. Uh, you know, what does it look like? When does it show up? What does it sound like? What are the things it says to you? And we do some work to create a way to put it to the side, to minimize it, to turn down the volume. There are many, many ways to deal with it. 
but one of the easy things that you can just say to yourself right now, years ago, I was getting ready to make a big change. And my coach said to me, I, I had some anxiety come up about it. And I said, John, you know, I, I don't know why I'm so anxious about it. And he looked at me and I'll never forget this. He said, well, Patrice, you must be up to something big. And I'll never forget that because um, it, it almost freed me up at that very moment. Like, yeah, of, of course, you know, when I'm comfortable and I'm not stretching, I don't do anything new. I'm not, I'm not gonna feel anxious. So that's a reframe. That's one of the tools that we use. So step four, now it gets, starts to get really, really fun. I'm excited about this. Um, for me, it's all fun, but this is where my clients have the most fun. Identifying your zone of genius. Now you may have heard of this, but I wanna just talk a little bit about how you will know what your zone of genius is. So the zone of genius is, um, is when certain things intersect. So something that you're passionate about that you would do no matter what. Maybe you, you love math. <laughs> Maybe you love to ice skate. Maybe you love to read books and you just, you just love it. And you don't know where it comes from. It's just you know, something that you love to do. So that's a passion. You know, whether you get paid for it or not, you're just passionate about it. You're drawn to it. So your passions when they intersect with your talents or what I call your strengths, your strengths are your natural abilities. So these are inborn things that you know, are specific to you. So maybe you're naturally good at sports or maybe you're naturally good at music or maybe you're naturally good at um, communicating. So, there, that may be a natural gift, but then let's say you take it a step further and you actually invest time in developing skills. So, you know, maybe you are naturally good with your body and you, you ice skate and you learn, you know, how to ice skate, you know, really well. So you may be passionate about moving your body and you know, doing that activity, you may have a natural strength and you have enjoyed developing that skill. So when all three of those things have an overlap, you are typically experiencing your zone of genius. So I say in this, in this um, slide, I have passions, now passions, you should pay attention to them because they trump everything. And um, a lot of people don't pay attention to their passions because they say, well, I could never make money doing what I like. Um, and they, they focus in on skills. What skills do I have? What do I need to learn? Not a bad thing, but that should not be the first thing that you look at. So your passions, your strengths and your skills, when they overlap, you are actually getting into flow state because you're, when, when you're developing skills in your area of strength and passions, it's, you're stretching and it can be very exciting. So this is a really fun step and um, you can do it just by beginning to kind of download and uh, again, pause and reflect. And, you know, I'm big on journaling. Not everybody likes to do that, but I have tons of journals and lots of pieces of paper flying around where I am always jotting down things that occur to me. Um, but one of the things I'd like to warn you in this step is to not begin to say, well, I can't put that down because that that can't translate into a job. I'll, I'll share with you a little bit later in some case studies um, how when people did surface their passions and own them, how they were able to turn them into something that um, got um, woven into their, their career. 
So your passion, skills, and strengths, um, when they overlap, you're in your genius zone. So this in step four, again, uh, you want to list your passions and you don't want to leave them off the list if you say, well, that could never translate into a job. Um, you want to look at what are you naturally good at? You know, what's a natural talent that you have and skills that you've picked up that you actually enjoy? So that's step four. And step five, we're finally at step five. This is like really fun and uh, you may have already done mind mapping but I call this step career mind map. Now what do you do in a career mind map? What happens in a career mind map is all the work that you did prior is you start to take that and you start to uh, make connections so I used to, I had a client, I love this client. He was, he was wonderful. He was, I think, just about three years old. So he had already had, you know, like 10 years of in and out of different things and not finding what he loved. And when we did the career mapping um, exercise and we started to, he started to put down his passions and his skills and his, uh, you know, natural strengths and, and what he valued. He really had a value. He was in tech, but he really had a value on personal development and also using his body. He was very good at, at kinesthetics. And so when we did the mind mapping, and I love what he said to me, he came to me and he said, I want, I want you to help me connect the dots. So day one, when we started working together, I heard him say that over and over, if I could just connect the dots. So the career map is about connecting the dots. And this is just a, um, you know, this is, this is a very simple idea that I have on the screen, but you can go online and you can find great examples of mind mapping. The, the main thing you're doing is like, let's say in the middle, you, you name your mind map, my awesome career. And then you start to have these um, spokes coming out of the middle if you want to do it that way. You can also do it with sticky notes. Sometimes I'll just do a big whiteboard and I'll take my sticky notes and put the main topics there and start to let my mind make connections. So you might have your values um, around, you would put those on the mind map. You would start to put uh, can make connections between your values and your passions and your strengths and your skills. So mind mapping is one of the best tools. I learned it actually back in the eighties. I am that old, um, but I was introduced to it when I started to um, really learn about accelerated learning, which is another passion of mine. How, how does the brain learn? How do we change? How do we sort of accelerate um, and utilize more of ourselves. So mind mapping, you want to do a career map and you want to take a very playful attitude. Now, this is the last step. So how do we get down to what the heck are you going to do for a career? This is where it pops. So once you do your, your career mind map and you're clear about your values, You've updated your values. They're adult values. They're coming from a place of uh, not feeling limited. So they're not your childhood values. They are sort of your, your adult values. When you have them spread out and you're beginning to see where the passions and the strengths and the skills overlap, this is where it all comes together. And career themes will emerge. Um, maybe on my map, of course, what would emerge is helping. I love to help, you know, and I, I love to study about the mind and I love to study about all kinds of things related to uh, personal and professional growth. So, you know, my job title might come out as, you know, uh, I might just see helper or in, in one person's mind map, what was coming out was she saw that she was super creative and she loved all things uh, to do with just 
being creative with her hands, creative with her mind. She loved writing. And she actually changed from, she had a very good, stable job all through her 20s. And she had fallen into this job. But when she got to her early 30s, she knew she did not want to stay there. And so this this idea of creativity was a driving force. Um, and she really valued adventure and um, learning and all those things. And what popped out on her map was she decided she wanted to be in a career that combined creativity and health. Um, that was another passion. She was into yoga and eating, you know, healthy. And she ended up becoming, um, leaving this government job and getting into private industry and working in a, um, she became, she worked in the field of advertising. So she was beginning to use that creativity and the, the advertising agency she works for, she's still working there, has to, it, they only take on um, health and wellness type um, products and clients. So I'm going to share some case studies, but before I do, I just want to review the steps and we're at 913. So I may actually take questions instead of giving you case studies, but the steps are number one, create your compelling future vision. This is a larger than life vision of a amazing life that you would love to have. Number two, Uncover your invisible blueprint, your invisible blueprint. And this is going deep. This is finding out what is driving you. What is, what are things that are deeply, deeply important to you? Number three, you got to build that saboteur management toolbox because it's going to show up and it's going to tell you to stop. It's going to tell you, you know, you're full of it, that, you know, this is kooky. You shouldn't do it. You know, you've got you know, something good going on now, you shouldn't make a change, or it may say, you know, look, you're not going to be happy, so don't even bother. So the saboteur management toolbox is step three. Step four, discover your zone of genius. This is really fun, and spend more time in it, because that's what will give you the juice. That's what will put you in the flow state and then step five, create your career mind map. So that's what I have for you. Um, oh, and I, I, I said I would share with you the number one predictor of success. So this is your bonus today. So I've done a lot of studying. And as I've said many times on this um, webinar that I'm particularly interested in the mind and how we keep going. Um, and, and how, you know, athletes, you know, they have a lot of failure. They have, you know, it's, it's stressful to get to a high level, um, in athletics and sports, but there's a lot of studies in psychology that have been done. And the number one predictor of success, drum roll, is something called psychological motivation. So it's actually not psychological motivation, psychological momentum. So we typically would just say momentum. And what, how, does, how do we create this momentum? So this is exactly how it's done in sports. This is how it's done in any high performance field. There's something going on in the mind of that person that is not going on in the mind of the person who gave up. And they're taking small, achievable baby steps. But after each one, each step that has worked out, they're giving themselves a little thumbs up. They're saying, good job. And sometimes it's somebody outside of them, particularly in sports, it's it maybe your coach. But imagine if you had this inner coach that every time you did something, oh, I showed up for that webinar about how to pivot. Good job. You know, if you give yourself that little thumbs up, it actually will change your body chemistry, your brain chemistry. 
And this gives you the juice to take the next step. So psychological momentum is the number one thing that predicts that someone be, will be successful. So here's one small action step you can take. And if you haven't gone to my website, I invite you to go there and download uh, a free gift. I playfully call it get out of job jail <laughs> and find a career you love in 2020. And this will help you with step one. It'll help you start that compelling future vision. So you can go to my website, www.patriceperillo.com, and you can easily download that. Now, I know there are some people on this webinar who have already done that. And for you, I have something extra special. Um, and only if you've downloaded that and done that step, um, I invite you to... You can also go to my website and I believe there's a place on there that says um, intro call. And I invite you to have an intro call with me. This is a 20 minute call and we will address your specific situation. So I'm gonna stop my share because I think Patricia is ready. Yes, but this was, this is quite incredible. It, it just, there's so many brilliant um, golden nuggets that you have there when it comes to figure out what, the, what is the right career for you. And, and, it, and it's a, a lot of it is the same as what it takes to figure out what is the right business for you. But in fact, a business and a career, is the same thing. It's a vocation. And um, does anyone have a question? So I just wanted to say also, I didn't share the case studies, but um, I have, uh, you know, you can go to my LinkedIn profile and you can read some of the, this is the people who have left, um, you know, who wanted to be public about their testimonial, their success story. But right. I have doctors, I have lawyers, I have people who are uh, designers, engineers, scientists, and they've, they've made it. They, they, even though they still had graduate school loans and mm -hmm. dental school to pay off, they decided to go through the process and they got the clarity and they're on that new path. So I just right. wanted to kind of let people know that that is possible. Any, does anyone have a question for, for Patrice right now? If not, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask my question, but okay. Uh, Kate says, um, hi, Kate, I'm glad you made it. How do you stop your saboteur from stopping you at the very beginning? And how do yeah. you quiet the mind to enable you to go through these steps in a valuable way? That's a great question. That's, that's terrific. So, Kate, this is the thing that stops everyone. And I, I, I would probably have a line, you know, all the way across the Golden Gate Bridge of people <laughs> trying to... Uh, to get into my courses and my services, if if everyone had exactly what I my core message is, possibility mind. So possibility mind is, you know what? Somebody else changed. I can do it too. Now, the saboteur is going to say, uh-uh, you cannot. So what you need to do is just continue to look. This is a, I. I have a whole, I just started a community of so a support community to keep people in that space of seeing, seeing other people do it. When you see that it's possible for someone else, you can begin to say, well, it's possible in the world. So if it's possible in the world, is it possible for me? So that I, I'm trained in neurolinguistic programming, humanistic neurolinguistic psychology, and the whole thing is getting your your thought system into a place where you say, you know what, I've got a lot of doubt, but I, I want to grow the part of me that is has a little bit of a, a belief that this is possible. So you want to feed that part of yourself. And the more you feed that and, again, pay attention to that, that possibility. And there's many exercises I take people through. And sometimes we just look at their past and we look at when in their past did they feel 
that they could be successful? When did you try something new? And we build on that kind of momentum. So you look back and say, you know, there was a time when I, you know, if you want to look all the way back to riding your bike, I remember that. That was really hard for me. I'm not a kinesthetic sports person and, and riding a bike was very hard for me. And I, I say, if I could learn that, well, I bet you I could learn this. So I hope that helps a little bit with the answer. Yes, yes. thank you. Sorry, that this is Kate. Thank you very much. That really helped. Great. Thanks, thanks Great. for your question, Kate. Yeah, it is the number one thing that stops people. Again, I, I think, you know, I would... I would be just overwhelmed with people knocking at my door saying, help, help, help. If everybody had that core message, uh, I can, I can have a career I love. It's possible. So B has the question, how do you over overcome the challenge of the combination of A, no funds for trainings, coaching, and B, age, I'm 61, and my savings are meager, all of for retirement, 10K. And I need to change career, but I'm currently a massage therapist. First of all, 61 is really young. Me. I'm 58. I'm staring right at 61. Because I don't feel old. So I say, perish the thought of your age being a problem, right? <laughs> I mean, so go ahead and, and uh, yeah. what yeah. do you say well, to this? It's so common. It's a, number one, money is like, it, it always, every, every seminar, every workshop, every, every client I've ever talked to, money usually comes up. It's a barrier. Mm -hmm. Number one, I am, I, I'm, I'm excited. I haven't launched it yet, but get on my email list and you're going to hear more and more about ways to get some very affordable coaching. Yep. And I'm excited. I, I have a program called Passion Purpose Paycheck and I, I'm super excited about this. This was, I had to overcome my saboteur <laughs> to create this program, but I'm super excited. It is my legacy. It is all the wisdom that I have wrapped up in an online course and it's going to be for a group and it's going to be very affordable. So just stay tuned for that. But another way to just get some help is to jump into my Facebook community, um, create a path to um, a rewarding career. So you can go to Facebook and find that and um, or email me and I'll give you the link and you can join. Um, but there's ways to get the support. And the key thing is to surround yourself with possibility thinking. So, um, when you do that, so 61, uh, yeah, I, I'm just getting started. I'm 64. <clears throat> there is a song about that, you know, Beatles. <laughs> but I'm, I'm 64 and I just feel like, I'm, I mean, I've been in this career a long time, but I feel like I'm just getting started to, yeah. to really blossom and to, to come into my own. So it's never too late. And it's, it's, we, go, we go back to my core message. You can have a career you love. It's yeah. never too late. Yeah. And I agree with, you know, being excited, you know, after you've had a lot of careers, even maybe a lot of different jobs and realizing you have a new right. passion. That's what makes life. So that's what keeps you young, really, I think, you know, right. but there's another question here. Melissa asks, skills play an important part in overall success for people in transition who have not spent the last three, five years working right. in the area of expertise you're in, you're interested in. So, yes. oh, yeah, I, I love that. So here's the thing about that, Melissa. Yes, skills do play a part, but I say passion trumps everything because, you know, listen, I, uh, there are many skills I did not have. And I, as a business, I, I, I did not go into uh, personal development to become a quote unquote entrepreneur or businesswoman. I came, I came here to help people. But what I had to gain skills. I, I had to invest, a, you know, a, a big chunk of my funds in getting business coaching and learning all the things and that Patricia already knows how to put a business together. So skills do play a big part. But if you don't have the passion, forget about the skills. Okay, I know a woman who is um, a, an extremely talented pianist, and and she played for some very, very famous choirs uh, uh, and uh, the Tabernacle Choir, that famous one, I think, Mormon Tabernacle Choir, but she did that. She was skilled in it, but she did not want to stay in that career. And she actually 
I think she was either in her late 50s or early 60s. She went back to graduate school. She probably kept teaching piano or doing some things to fund that. She went back to graduate school. She got her MSW. And the way I met her is I worked for hospice, Hope Hospice, years ago. And I met Mary Ellen and she she had taken that that leap and she had gotten a new skill set. So I just invite you. It's all about investing in yourself. It's never and, and it's growth, right? It's, it's life is fun when you grow, when you learn new things. And, and you know, the skills is important, right? But you, it's more than just important to get the job done or to get a new career. It's important psychologically to keep your passion. The more you invest in your skills, the more passionate you become into, into what you want to do. Right. So that's, is there any other questions? If not, I will ask the question I had at the beginning. Um, my question is, you know, you talk about step one being creating a compelling vision. Is it the same as uncovering your big why, you know, your, your deep why, or, you know, we hear it's, about the why, the purpose, yeah, all that stuff, yeah. right? The deep, the deep why is actually your values work. Okay. Right? Okay. But, but the compelling future vision... I'm going to share mine with you. So okay. I, so this is maybe unrealistic and that's what a compelling future vision. It needs to be like a huge leap, a huge pull. Like, I don't think I could ever get there, but wouldn't it be great? Okay. So I see myself sitting. I don't know exactly, you know, what state I'm in, but I do know I'm sitting at, in a place where I have a panoramic view of an ocean. Okay. And, and I have this clean, streamlined environment. And I, I, I don't know if I'm working or what I'm doing, but I had, do have a laptop there. And I, I seem to be sort of, you know, just my fingers are typing and I'm just in, in a flow state. But every now and then I look up and I see this panoramic view of the ocean. So I must be in this amazingly luxurious beach house and someone's in the kitchen making me a gourmet lunch and life is amazing so it's a crazy vision and I do not have my bank account it doesn't have right now anything that would create that for me but when I look at that it lifts me and I say Mm -hmm. whoa keep going Patrice because that is it's really what I want is that state the state of being. So to be in that place where I just, I feel just, uh, I, I'm just drinking in the beauty of life. You need to have those emotions, right? These emotions, it, it brings the emotion to actions, right? So that's what the compelling future vision is. It's really setting up your brain chemistry. Right. And I'm going to so share it's, it's your Not feeling. a goal, okay? Because we yeah. get down to goal setting later. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sharing somebody, someone asked for your Facebook page. I shared it in the, the link to the, in the chat, but here's a Facebook page for Patrice. If you'd like to uh, connect with her uh, on her Facebook page. Um, does anyone have another question for Patrice? Anybody brave enough to ask something specific to you, perhaps? Mm-hmm. I'll I'll just share a, a really a cool story. Go ahead and share your story. So yeah, so so uh, a number of years ago, I took on a client, and honestly, I'm just going to tell you the truth here. I wasn't sure if this client was going to be successful. Now that's that's not typically not how I think, but he was sort of all over the the map. And he had been in lots of different careers. And he actually said to me that he had been fired from, and I think it was an exaggeration, but he said he had been fired from every job he ever had. So this, he had written off all of his passions. He 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 didn't even sort of look in that direction. And he was trying, you know, of course he tried tech and he tried lots of different things. And um, he was miserable. And um, so he came to me probably as a last ditch effort. And I took him through this process 
And I'm not going to tell you it was magic. I'm not going to tell you it was easy because he had a, he had a big saboteur. He was always looking back at the past. He was looking at his childhood. He was looking at a lot of reasons why he wasn't going to succeed. And we worked together and it was just such a delight to see what came of this. And he actually, um, I have to put this success story on my website, but he wrote me a testimonial. And, and in that he said that he, he had uncovered through our work, a childhood dream. And that dream was to get to, he was, he was really good with his body and he wanted to use his natural, you know, abilities with his body. He wanted to teach. He wanted to inspire people. He was very interested in, in high performance and personal growth and even esoteric stuff. So he, he uncovered all of this and he said, I uncovered a childhood dream. And he went in the direction of, he, he just totally changed gears and he started to work in the personal, um, the uh, personal performance, high performance coaching, but with the, with the body. So he, he's a, what do you call that? When you go to a gym and you have a, <laughs> you have a coach right there with you, but he's a personal trainer, yeah. personal trainer, but he's, he's a high end personal trainer. Oh, cool. Uh, he's gained a lot of other skills. Um, I believe he's incorporated massage and, and acupuncture and all of these things, but he, uh. When, when he just, just opened up to that part of himself. Wow. It, it, That's it, amazing. So this was a guy I just, I, I, you know, I him over, you know, the time we worked together, um, come out of a real saboteur mindset into, wow, I'm, I'm in my genius zone. And to see yeah. someone in their genius zone and making money at it. I mean, and he, I do believe he's on my LinkedIn um, in one of my success stories there, I hope. But um, if that's he's wonderful. Hot. So we, I don't know if we have time for another questions, but um, B was asking, it's not really a question, but can you share more about the career mind map? Yes, I can. So the career mind map, again, this is, this is your last step. <laughs> so you don't want to go here first, because if you go here first, you, you'll get stuck. Okay. So just be forewarned, don't go there first, but for the fun of it, I would say go online. Um, I, I mean, I've studied mind mapping, like I said, uh, since the 80s. And um, I actually learned it when I um, studied something called photo reading, which is a, a way of reading with your unconscious mind and <laughs> loading a lot of information in. But mind mapping, you can find a lot of information online about it right now. And basically, you're taking your main ideas so let's say if you you know you want to get a new career you begin to pull up well what's important to me so you've already done all those steps that we talked about and you have this wealth of information and you start by mapping it making putting the main ideas down so my gal who was really big on creativity and flexibility they were some of her values and um she wanted, she was a new mom. She wanted, you know, some balance in her life. And uh, she wanted to be in an environment where there was collaboration. So they were her big chunks. And then she started to, you know, you just make little lines and connections and say, well, collaborating, what, what's an example of collaboration? So you're working from the big picture which most people don't get into. They're all into what, what job should I get? What, what are the skills? What are the tasks? But you're working from the big picture. And in my work, we call it chunking down into detail. So that's what a mind map does. And you can do it. I have a whiteboard and, and I think Patricia, you do too, but I do it with stickies. I'll put a main theme at the top and then I'll, I'll put, I'll start, like just brainstorming ideas that go on. Like I have an email series of nurturing emails. That's wonderful. That's and so you just start, you just go, okay, what, you know, I have a nurturing email series. What would be valuable to people? What do I know? What do I love? And, and it, you just start putting those right. little pieces down. And it, so 
go online, study mind mapping, but don't do it as your first step to figure out your career. Right. Um, It's very last step. Well, this is a great end of uh, a conclusion to this wonderful presentation. We have amazing feedback. Uh, this has been so wonderful. You both touched my heart and soul today. Love the presentation. Thank you so much, B, for, for your appreciation. And thank you so much, Patrice. This is really, really useful gold nuggets here when it comes to figuring out what you want to do in our lives, you know, and and. I'm going to end this with a favorite quote is, you know, tell me what are you going to do with your one and precious life and or what do you plan on doing with your one and precious That's from Mary Oliver. So I'm going to end with this quote. And thank you everyone for your great participation. That was really, we got 100% of people who signed up actually showed up today. But I will still leave, send all the replays to everybody along with links on how you can connect with Patrice and also if you want to download her uh, free uh, uh, ebook or a free uh, offer and connect with her further. So thank you very everybody and uh, you have a great rest of the weekend and you take care. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. a delight. It was a delight to be here. Thank you Patrice.